Hello, everybody. Welcome to Epistemic, episode number 17, titled Practitioner Development. I am your host, Reed Nicewonder, and I also have co-hosts, Anthony and Dan. What's up, you guys? Hey, hey. Hello. Nice to be here. Yeah. We also have some special guests, um, Tyrone Wells, Linda Moko, and Ben Diesel. What's up, you guys? How's it, everybody? What's up? <laughs> I'm so excited that you guys are here. Seriously. Yeah, me too. It's, it's nice to be awesome. here. Yeah. It's my first face to face with everyone here. So it's really good to be here as well. Oh. Yeah. I think most people would be more would recognize you more from your channel name. So Tyrone, what is your channel name? Sure. My channel name is Let's Chat. Uh, it's on YouTube. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And Linda, what's yours? Uh, mine is um, Super Curious. Nice. I think you could tell about that from your shirt. That's very cool. And Ben, what's yours? Uh, mine is Seas of Thought SE. Uh, Ty actually convinced me to stick my face into one of my videos, so people you might actually recognize me by now. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're doing the classic Anthony, just, uh, yeah. just a GoPro on the chest. So it's great. To me, it's again. not the face; it's the beautiful hair that I just wanted to show off to everybody. Absolutely, so dude. I think it was years before I decided to be like on camera, unless like somebody grabbed the camera from me and turned it on me. You pretty much didn't see me. Uh, in my videos until maybe within the last two years, I guess. Or if I gave yeah. a talk, then it was obvious. They're like, oh, wow. Anthony's bald. That's <laughs> <laughs> what SE does to a man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Don't tell me that, dude. <laughs> well, that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about how how this method can tends to change the people that practice it. And you know, what better group of people to get together than individuals who are at various stages of going out and doing this. So it's it's really cool to have you guys here. Seriously, thank you. Yeah, totally. And before we get into that, um, I just want to read a quick letter that I received. Well, Anthony and I both received an email. It comes from Brian Teague. And he says, I wanted to express my gratitude for the work you do. It has a tremendous impact on my life. I was a Christian about one year ago, and my coworker told me he was an atheist. I started asking questions. What is an atheist, and does God exist? And reality set in. Atheist videos started showing up in my YouTube feed. After watching a few videos from both your channels and a few videos from the atheist experience, I was literally screaming at my TV. I've been brainwashed. Uh, your videos have helped me open my eyes to be more skeptical and to embrace science, evidence, and critical thinking. I just wanted to let both of you know what you're doing is incredibly important and does make a difference. So it's very nice to hear. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. That was a nice letter. That was the first time Reed and I both got a letter at the same time from an individual. Wow. It's pretty neat. Uh, it probably won't be the last either. Have you guys, I know you're kind of new to this stuff, but it's, it's going to probably happen. I think you guys are going to probably start getting some people reaching out to tell you how your videos are affecting them. Mm. I've had one very good one uh, from an atheist, actually. Yeah? Uh, I can quickly read it. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> are, are they okay with you doing it? I think so, yeah. Um, you can I think it is. Message. Yeah, so uh, we met at a, at a meetup where we don't really have that many secular uh, places where people can meet in South Africa, where there's basically just one society. And it got kind of casual meetups that people organize every now and again. And I just spoke to him about it. And he said to me, wow, dude, it sounds like you're evangelizing. So I said, okay, cool. Um, maybe just go and check out one of my videos. And I'd really like to hear from you. If you, if you afterwards, you still think it's evangelizing, I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear from you. And uh, he sent a message back to me that say, says, I think it is really a far superior approach to others that I have seen. And that includes my own. Not I, oh, I am not saying that I'm going to go be, be going out and doing street epistemology, but I have realized that I have had an unjustifiably superior attitude in this regard. It causes me to look down on believers. Aside from being logically unsound, my approach would serve to alienate people. I'm learning from you. And I thought that was very cool. Damn. Very that's cool. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, that's wonderful. So amazing. Cool. So let's get into our main topic, which is just practically just telling about how SE has um, 
helped us in personal ways or in professional ways and just what it's what it's just done to us you know it's really cool cool and so first like how did we first discover se um are we gonna do it for like all of us i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> first to go with that. everyone kind of knows my story probably at this point so yeah uh read your story yeah. um i think you started seeing my videos and then going out um, and you, you have a video of you mm -hmm. explaining how you got out there. Yeah. Um, I just uploaded a, a video pretty much where I explain my story mm -hmm. um, and they, people can watch that. I'm sure they've heard it as well. And I think we know Dan's as well pretty closely. Yeah. So he's got a very interesting <laughs> it's well documented. story. It's <laughs> yeah, well documented. Like you know how there's like non-traditional college students? That's how I feel about me entering SE. I kind of did it the other way around. But, yeah. yeah. You probably have one of the most interesting introduction to SE stories that anybody has, I think. I mean, it's it's not it's not typical. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's obviously that's available on Anthony's channel if you haven't seen it yet. So Yeah. So we can just yeah probably go from how I see it from left to right. Um, I think Ben. So, what was your story? How did you first get into it? Um, so December, I kind of got into a deep dive of of atheist videos, uh, particularly into Aaron Rod stuff, and uh, whoa, whoa. I stumbled upon the the interview you did with Anthony, and I was first I was like, what what is this? It's Anthony just had this vibe about him he looked like a personal trainer it looked like he was going to give Aaron Ross some weight loss tips or something <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was it was just my mind was blown when I, I started look watching Anthony's videos um I've always kind of been trying to to argue people out of, of bad positions or at least positions that I thought were bad and I was just amazed to see how effective effective it was so yeah it really very quickly convinced me it's mm -hmm. the way to go. You're a graduate of the R and Raw Learns SE video. A lot of people have seen that thing, man. Yeah, that was that was good. I would love to do that again with him. Yeah, uh, that 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 thing you tweeted about Seth Andrews that would be amazing. You yeah, you know, Seth, to convince him to come out. Seth Andrews Yo. lives in Oklahoma. We tend to cross paths at different events. It's conceivable that he could either come here or I go there. We meet somebody else somewhere else and do and do SE together. In fact, uh, well, I don't want to get too off track here, but I'm, I'm sort of experimenting with teaching people SE in the field. When I reach, when I encounter two people, I'm going to upload some videos in the next couple of days uh, where I'm going to experiment with that. But yeah, that would be cool to do too, a little bit more like with Arn. That's cool that you saw that. Yeah. So, so Tyrone, what's your hey. next story? Uh, so uh, I move around a lot and I've been bouncing from a new job uh because i'm a researcher so we have contracts that we work in and it's, it's been taking me around the world um when i was in sweden that's when i came out as an atheist uh I'd, before then i was like going through every you know title in the book non-religious irreligious still finding <laughs> myself spiritual but still seeking and then i was like a hardline christian all the way through like uh like at least through my most part of my grad school but when i realized that i was an atheist i noticed that a lot of social groups that i had weren't necessarily available to me anymore. So I was looking for fellowship that I could have with other people. Found a meetup group of atheists in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I found that I really enjoyed asking them questions about, you know, what made them ultimately transition out of their faith. And what what they what was that straw that made them realize that they had to completely change their outlook or that they needed a better reason to find something. And then one of the guys who I was talking to was like, the questions that you're asking me is a lot like this guy who's like out there was asking these questions with people as well like just on the street with like a GoPro or something. And I'm like, man, that sounds stressful as hell. I don't want to watch anyone get in and argue with anybody. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll watch one of those videos. And I get that stuff just filled me up with anxiety, but I saw the approach and it was one of Anthony's videos. And I was like, okay, that is, this is a really cool technique. I'm going to need to hang around like these channels and figure out uh, if there's a way that, you know, uh, eventually this could be something that I could use in like a regular conversation. And I started, and I thought I knew what I was doing. I actually went to an atheist meetup group in Lexington, Kentucky, when I moved over here. And I, I, I had all the questions down. Like I knew them, like, like I knew them so well. And I go to this meetup group with nothing but atheists. 
And like the first atheist, like, how you doing? I'm like, hey, how you doing? You mind if I talk about like how you became an atheist? And like one by one, I'm like throwing the street epistemology thing at each of them. And at the end, none of them want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> it's like, who is he coming in here trying to like convince us that we're wrong? They actually, <laughs> but uh, uh, since then I realized like, I need to like really hone this technique. It's really something that I want to get better at or like it's a hobby that I really do want to improve myself at. So uh, that's when I started like from scratch, just getting in contact with the Facebook group and then like throwing out some of the, the dialogues that I've been having at other meetup groups that I've had getting feedback from them. And I found that instrumentally wonderful because it ultimately got me to where I'm more comfortable with it. And that's when I saw Reed's videos come out where he had the, you know, the dual feed conversation. And I'm like, this is a format that I like because it keeps me from having to be aggressively friendly, <laughs> which I have the habit of being and just be in a, you know, passive position and have people come to me who are more or less extroverts who want to have a conversation. I felt like that was like, the best connection of like everything together, like everything I learned, mm -hmm. Anthony's videos and Reed's approach. And that's how I got to SC. Amazing. Passive yeah. initiation. Yeah. yeah, I kind of, sometimes I wonder like, did I slow the, the adoption of SE by only presenting one method of initiating talks? You know, like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe, maybe more people would have jumped on sooner if they saw like, a, a table set up like Reed did or whatever, but it never occurred to me to do it. Like, so Reed sort of the, the vanguard in that. And that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That, that, that style appeal to you. Mm. If anything, it showed me that there's more than one way to do it. And mm -hmm. when I saw that, then I was like, okay, this is still something that we're like still trying to figure out. Like it's still something that we can contribute to. Oh yeah. And evolve as a process. And once I knew that I was like, oh, okay, Okay, I get it. Let's try. It. Let me see if I can do it my way, and that gave me the freedom that I needed to like experiment in my own way that I was better at, or like mm -hmm. uh, use my skill set. And I think once people realize that, then anyone can try it in their own different ways. I like Ben's approach really a lot too. I feel like he's really fearless with whoever he wants to talk to. If I talk, oh man, like I I live in the heart of Kentucky. That's true. It's true. But I rarely get to talk to people who are like my own skin color. And when I do, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, I, I want, I, like, it's been forever since, like, another black person. That's great. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Um, and and I, I noticed my voice is trembling and stuff like that. Now <laughs> been so smooth. And I'm like, I need that. Like, I just That's need to calm down. Like, bro, we're like, we're fam. Let's, let's talk. Let's have that conversation. You know, I hope yeah. people watching this and listening to this understand that we are in the beginning stages of this and we, this, we haven't perfected this and set this really high bar, mm. the bar to entry and being creative and coming up with different ways uh, at this are, is, is fairly low. The barrier to entry is low and I hope people aren't scared off by seeing more polished discussions. Yeah. One thing that, that I kind of, sorry, you know what, um, I'm sorry, yeah, we should get to Linda. Yeah, let's yeah. get to Linda first. <laughs> sorry, Linda. She's so I'm the quiet there. one. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> um, well, I, I found SE first time one and a half, almost two years ago. And that was I was um, actually listening to some Atheist Experience um, YouTube videos. And then um, an Anthony Ma Magnabosco video came on like automatically after one. But I wasn't watching the video. I was just listening to it. And I was doing a 7K walk. Um, so that's like walking for, well, two hours. I'm a slow walker. And then, um, or is that slow? I don't even know. Anyway, um, so this, this conversation comes on between a man and uh, I remember it as the two, uh, the Mormon couple, uh, a lady and a man. And they, uh, and I'm just blown away by this conversation. It's It's so chill. It's so relaxed. And I can feel these people thinking in the middle of it. And I was just like, that is the coolest thing ever. Like I've watched atheist experience for 10 years and that kind of, I could hear them thinking in the moment. Um, yeah, I don't know how to express that any better. I was blown away, I was awestruck. So it like stuck with me for the longest while, but I didn't know which video it was. So it took me a while to find it again and then find Anthony and, and find that he does this all the time and there's loads of videos to study and to watch. Um, and then it was um, in October last year that I had a, um, my own project where I wanted to learn more about critical thinking and I remembered the video 
And I was like, that's something that I could do. I think that kind of like fits the, um, my understanding of critical thinking and how we can go about doing that in real time with other people and engaging um, in critical th thinking together as a conversation. So then I decided I need to learn this. Um, and then I met an apologist online and he said, do you want to um, have a conversation? And I was like, okay, so I'll start with him. Uh, so that's how my YouTube channel came to be. And, uh, and the apologist is Dean Meadows and he's a really good sport and he's um, continuing to have having these conversations with me and allowing me to um, um, practice more and get better at it. Can that we just give story. some res respect to Linda for starting AC in hard mode? <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. I was just thinking, I think maybe we have something in common because when I went out, I went to the street preachers because I figured they're there all the time. And if they have the truth, they, th you know, this would be the perfect demographic to start on. And I think looking back, it was probably the worst dem demographic to start on because they were mm -hmm. so closed. I'm not saying that that's the situation with this apologist that you're talking with, but um, when you have an open interlocutor, and they're honest, you're going to have a good talk, no matter what your confidence level is with, with SE, you know, whatever your, your understanding of it. If you're just, ba if you're just new to it, I think that makes a big difference. So good for you. Good for you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. And going back to what Anthony said about how this is pretty much just an or open source process, uh, open source project that we're all pretty much stealing from each other, anything that works, anything that looks like it. <laughs> works we're just we're just taking it and running it with it and seeing what what works it's great there might be a time you turn on my channel and i'm sitting down at a table with dual cameras and dual mics and copying read setup you know it, i'm open i'm totally open to that and giving I it a shot to get to the next hard. level and have like seven cameras on one table like one on your foot yeah. one everything just like you know what's funny um i met this couple on the trail and and i was i was getting my, my i had my chest camera on and i was getting my my bit my my, my god cam camera on is what i call it and then the guy was, uh, there was a guy and girl, and he's like, hey, um, I've got a tripod. Can I film it from another angle? So he pulls out his tripod and his phone, and he's recording it too. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting that we very well could have had like three camera angles going on that one. Did you get his footage afterwards? He, he never sent it to me. So I'm, I'm editing oh. it right now. In fact, it's on my other monitor here. But as far as, uh, so far he hasn't sent it. So I think I'm just going to have the two camera angles. Mm. Okay. Uh, why did he want to film that? Did he know you from before? No. Like, was this this was it, this. I'm pretty sure that they were just walking by, and they were so excited that I was doing interviews. They they literally one of them literally leapt up and down with excitement to be interviewed. <laughs> but I, I don't get the impression they didn't know what I was doing. It turned out it, it really seemed like that was the case. Um, but then he asked if he could film it, so he he ran over to his backpack at his tripod. Interestingly, his phone overheated halfway through. I think it was in the mm. sun a little bit. Mm. Um, so maybe that's why. Maybe there's no footage at all. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a few questions. We just want to throw out there to all of us. Um, how were your conversations with people before learning SE in on these topics? Anybody? Whoa. Well, I wouldn't have them in, in that with my, oh, sorry, I just spoke and then I, you can't stop me. Um, in my house uh, with my family, I just wouldn't have those conversations. Um, I've always heard from my family members, like, Linda, you think too much, you make it too difficult, you're too challenging, all this stuff, like, just give it a break. Um, so then I just finally gave up. Now I started talking again, but it's so much more fun and my family members are having fun talking on these subjects with me. So, mm. Ben, you uh, that's, a, that's the most interesting part about it. Um, I wanted to say about, about mine, Anthony's approach, you know, we just walk up to strangers and say, hey, you want to have a chat? And uh, most people I've, I've talked about or told about my hobby are just terrified. They're like, how do you get people to speak to you? Isn't it awkward? And as soon as I watch the videos, they're just amazed that people are actually open to speak about these topics. I mean, um, in South Africa, Currently, I find it much easier to get people to talk about polit oh, religion than politics. And uh, it's, it's kind of giving people the confidence looking, watching these videos that, to show them you can actually talk about these topics without getting into a huge fight about it. And uh, for me, it, it was a big issue. Um, there's still, because of our history, there's, there's still a kind of a bunch of 
ideas and sentiments and beliefs in South Africa that I personally don't feel very comfortable with. And I would get into these huge debates with people at work with my friends. And normally they, they just end up in a fight. Everybody would get very frustrated. Uh, I'd kind of be dismissive of their position and say, you're just being nihilistic or, or you're just being ignorant. And we wouldn't get, did, didn't get anywhere. And uh, when I started getting into SE, it just completely changed how I approached it. It actually got me to the point where um, I came out as an atheist to my parents for the first time in the last couple of months. Ooh, it's not that I, I was hiding it. Yeah. It just it, I, it kind of made me feel empowered. You know, I've got this tool. Um, I've actually invest, it convinced me to investigate my own beliefs much better than I had before. And it just made me feel like, why not? Uh, I can discuss this with them in a, in a meaningful and, and constructive way. So let's do it. Wow. That's really interesting because I still don't know of a good SE format that would work really well with family. And it seems like if you talk more about that, that'd be great. Like maybe we should talk more about that offline. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> I've got heaps of stories about that. Like really, but, but it's not like I go into like this SE mode when, and I don't use the scale and all that. It's just, I think in a, <sighs> I listen more, I mm. listen more and my questions are, um supportive <laughs> mm. i don't know how to express this it's an it's just an open attitude to what they have to say and then my questions are just um they're on point when i come with them but they're not like answer me now it's like yeah. we just I, we're sitting and, and drinking coffee in the living room and then i'll just a add a little question to the end and then we'll go to dinner and people don't even have to answer it you know it's just this kind of like this lightness to it. I think yeah. listening and attitude are like the two biggest things that I was lacking before I knew about SE. Mm -hmm. uh, the tax that I was using was very much everything that I learned from watching, what is it, 634 episodes of the Atheist Experience back, back to back. <laughs> so like I would listen to a person, but all I would be doing is like compartmentalizing and like mm -hmm. getting ready the next attack that I'm about to throw out at them that stumps people when they're calling into a show but when you're trying to convince them that they need to reconsider their position is not effective whatsoever. So it took mm. me a while to realize listening and the attitude that I have when I get into a conversation with someone are like the two biggest things. And so I think when I re I, I've recorded like the original uh, street epistemologies that I used to do with my neighbor who lived right across the hall from me. <laughs> and I, when I listened to him again, like about a month later, after I was like getting like some good practice, I posted in the study group. I'm like, I'm really glad I recorded this because I can't believe how much of an asshole I sounded. <laughs> I sounded so bad. So uh, like just a big stinker. So I'm thinking um, the biggest thing that I did learn from then to now is letting the person actually talk and coming to it with an open attitude mm -hmm. and not, not trying to constantly make, do the machine in my head while I'm listening to them. Just experience what they're saying. Generally try to see it from their perspective and try to not necessarily try to like always help them out, but like more of just help think with them on a problem. And that way we're working on it together as a team rather than me trying to look down on them. Oh, Linda's got something to say. It's, Let's the, go. <laughs> it's the freeway. It's the freeway. Like, we're working together on the, uh, to understand what yeah. the belief is and, yeah. and to like, um, investigate it and to m jiggle it around like we're doing it together in the yeah. same kind of like i always think of it i always think of it as taking the information that you're getting in the conversation and don't use anything outside of it so like take all of your preconceived judgments and notions that you have with this person and just throw that out the window and just take what's coming into you right there and address it right. and that's pretty much the best way to have the most effective conversations mm. in my experience so yeah, it's the difference between being the passenger or the driver because you can use questions to tra trap people or try to, you know, be antagonistic with qu even with questions. And you can just feel that in conversations, how people are just trying to attack and really yeah. we're trying to understand first and foremost. Yeah, there's an exploratory nature of the questions in SE that make, mm. make those situations so much better, even with a with a loved one. Uh, and yeah, you're not trying to trick them or trap them and get them into a gotcha moment that, no, I want to explore this, this thing that you believe. And if this is getting too overwhelming for you, that's fine. Let's go see a movie. Mm. You know, let's, let's leave it and we'll come back to it later. 
And the big thing about that is it changes your goals from actually trying to change a person's mind and whatever time limit you have to just giving them them the person that you're talking to the opportunity to think about what they believe and if so as long as you're able to get that just the moment where they're able to consider their deeply held beliefs that's that's really the win for both of you guys mm -hmm. and if they change their confidence that's an additional icing on the cake but a lot of people have these deeply held or deeply held beliefs and don't really put a lot of thought into them and so being there as a mm. baby they can actually express that yeah have that moment is what it's all about I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm uploading a video. Well, it's scheduled to release it in a couple hours. <clears throat> and it's with a guy on the trail, and he picks the belief that he believe the thing that he believes is that voter identification should be required. And I think he's pretty. He's pr probably a pretty right wing guy. But our labels never came up. It wasn't. It wasn't important what camp we were in, and it wasn't about trapping him. But the conversation was all about him explaining why he thinks that identification should be required and what would change his mind and oh that was a pretty instrumental moment in in the, in the formation of this belief and and then at the end i think we both had a really good understanding of where he was and we ended on really good terms and i think even though he didn't he didn't you know lower his confidence or express that he was doubting or questioning i think the the conversation in itself was a good example of se mm. Something which, which I really like um, is when people don't even, they can't even understand what your position is on something, or they don't know what your position is just out of the conversation. I had this one chat with, a, with an atheist, and he was so apologetic. He was saying, sorry, dude, I want to believe this, but I just can't. And he really <laughs> thought I was trying to... Were you biting your tongue thinking, dude, I agree with you, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I turn off the camera and I'm like, I'm an atheist. I think we had a good chat about it, but uh, and mm. I, I like that. It, it's 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 very nice to to be in a position where you can speak to people and they don't feel like you're forcing your bias on them. That they're they're really being open about their own position because they're not saying something which they think you want to hear. That's tougher with family members, though. Yes. Yeah. That true. Yes. Also, if you if you're known as that guy that asks questions around the area. And the reason why I say that is because by the time I actually had my conversation with Anthony, I had actually already heard about him from other Christians <laughs> that had actually talked to him. So I already knew that he was an atheist, or at least I kind of, you know, suspected. So that, Did you talk about like, your mindset going into the conversation with Anthony from your perspective? Because I noticed a lot of people who come to me are a little wary of seeing the whole setup and expecting an open conversation with someone, even if I say it's an open conversation. Well, somebody from my ministry had already talked to him, so I'd already like heard about what this guy was doing. Uh, but like, I was much more curious about it. I think if you go back to my video, I can kind of tell you like I was already having some questions about my faith, even though I wasn't very public about it. So like, being able to talk to Anthony was almost a way for me to explore that in a safe space without having to be necessarily judged by my Christian peers. If that makes sense. Um, and so I was kind of exploring some thoughts and ideas that I never actually said out loud before. Um, so that's why, like, a part of why I love SE especially is to give other people that same space to talk about stuff that they don't normally talk about on a daily basis. You know, most people don't have 30-minute conversations about God yeah. uh, out on the street with people in public. And, like, they, they, they start to say things out loud that they've never said out loud before that they don't realize. Yeah. I, I, that's what I did with myself, too. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a bit of a different mindset than I think for most people, but you know, there's uh, gotta be other people that were like me as well. So, yeah. And if you're saying it, you're thinking it. So it's a good way to just think and help people think. Mm -hmm. I had a funny talk with a lady. Uh, hmm. I, heard, I forgot what her name was, uh, but she believed that community was really important and she sat down and had a talk with me and we ultimately dug down to the, in her, her belief of community being important to a God belief. And we explored the God belief just a little bit and came to the conclusion that, well, maybe we don't know if a God exists or doesn't exist, but uh, either way, community is still important. And that's where I walked away from the conversation when we were done with the time was up. She was like, he didn't convince me to do anything. She was saying that to all the people. Watching. It's like, he wasn't going to convince me. He didn't ask me for money or anything. That was just yeah. a nice little chat. Whoa, what's oh, going dude. on? Don't you yeah. wish you could have her there the whole time, just vouching for you? Yeah, he's not going to convince you on anything. You should, you to try this. No, I also had a bunch of people when I try and stop them, they, they just say to me, oh, "Sorry, man, I don't have any money on me today. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to sell anything." Oh, wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> talk to you. So I do think they have it all in their minds. Cool. Oh, I get not quite all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to another I was question. Thinking. Uh, what were you thinking, Linda? I was just thinking, and so that's when I go yeah. quiet. <laughs> um, what are like some of the best ways for us or people to learn SE? Oh. Mm. So I write some. Watch everybody's channel. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, we have an app, we have videos, we have a guide. There's the book. There's interviews. Mm -hmm. You've got workshops recorded. Oh, workshops! Well. Yeah, we should. Yeah, done a few workshops. Honestly, think, in, in my view, I think watching a video is the most yeah. is the most. Um, it covered. You, yeah, it, it's the best. It's the best way I think to demonstrate the method and possibly even learn it. I think I don't. I can't think of any right now. I, I'm not aware of any other method that's better for teaching this than to actually watch it being done. Right. Mm. I would say the videos are really good too. I have a friend of mine, the same friend who I was doing the initial terrible SE sessions with. Uh, now he comes with me sometimes when I go do my setup and no talks, kidding. And we will role play with each other. And I got some of those videos recorded, but we will do role play back and forth. And I think maybe that's probably the even higher form because for both oh, parties, it's yeah. absolute. I, I walk away with that. I was like, I never thought about this route. I never thought about this line of reasoning. The way how I express this is really bad. My body language probably needs to be keyed down a little bit more <laughs> on this point. It was just really nice to have that kind of one-to-one uh, -one immediate feedback. I would imagine that that's probably that's probably a good warm-up for you too. You know, to take the nerves off if you even have any. But yeah, you know, role play. I think I, I think I agree with that. Like I think role play is probably the best way. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of experimenting with both. I'm filming role play. Well, it's not even role play because person A is acting as the street epistemologist to their friend who's person B. And it is, it's not so much role play as it is sort of instructional teaching on video. They're not pretending. Whereas with role play, you're, I guess you're kind of pretending. Mm -hmm. I'd like but to hear from role Linda. Role play is huge. What did? Oh, I just wrote, but it's kind of like the obvious thing before all of that, that, that you guys said is just preparing to do it yourself. But just wanting to do it uh, is the best way to learn. So practice is what I've found. Just, um, just opening the mind to, oh, what if I would do that? I think it's the best way. But of course, we're already talking about people who want to learn it. And so what do you do then? And I would agree with everything you just said. Does anyone get nervous going out and doing oh, it in public? So nervous. It's basically <laughs> <laughs> the, the first two conversations really of the day is I basically swap. scrap every time. Uh, it's a mess. <laughs> They're um, awkward. Uh, they they yes. end on a weird note. Yeah. Yeah, like you really need to kind of kind of warm up. Um, mm -hmm. But but when I was, was learning, I think I'm kind of lucky. Uh, we've got this very small office. Uh, we're a bunch of developers. I think we're, at the moment, almost 10 people. But among those 10 people, I've got a, a young earth creationist, an anti-vaxxer. Uh, I've got a... a New age spiritualist. I mean, we run the whole gamut. And, Sounds like uh, the beginning of a yeah. joke. Like you guys always exactly. get to a bar or something. <laughs> and, and the cool thing is, I the way that I kind of got started. I, every time we had a conversation about one of these things, like somebody saying, "Oh, don't you guys even think about getting your kids vaccinated?" I just asked questions, and uh, that was the easiest way to kind of ease into it. And it really gave me confidence to see, wow, this works very well. I wasn't changing anybody's mind i wasn't really necessarily digging into the what brought him to the belief as much but just starting to ask questions already made me see wow this is actually something that can work yeah going back to our previous episode of epistemic about cognitive biases there's one that um, adam has is the curse of knowledge that he talks about and it's so it's basically about how once we learn something and get kind of good at it, we we totally forget how it could be possible. We don't know this, and what it mm -hmm. felt like to not know this, and uh, yeah. And I think it's good to just do it, try it, and just deliberately be okay with failure. Mm -hmm. like expect mm -hmm. failure. Did you describe it and as then, failing forward, Reed? I think you said something like yeah, that. <laughs> I like that yeah. description. Yeah, yeah, just have that attitude of failing forward, expect yeah. it, 
it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. But just what, but hey, you know, back to practice, like have it be deliberate practice of deliberately watching yourself fail. <laughs> And oh, no. <laughs> it's awkward but yeah putting <laughs> putting your work cool. online you, you, whether you do it in like the private study group where there's a, a limited group of people or you put it on youtube getting that feedback from people was instrumental in getting better at this mm. and uh and not getting so wrapped up into like you know um being defensive and and like taking it personally yeah be open to yeah. say like you know okay i'm gonna upload this i know it's not perfect but if i'm gonna get better at this then i have to i have to get some feedback from people who have been watching this stuff and and can give me some good advice and then maybe take it down later or rename it so it doesn't pop up you know a number one search for street epistemology or something but but getting that feedback is crucial mm-hmm. to getting more comfortable at it and to getting better at it i think i'm yeah, wondering yeah. if i uh, if I go back and watch my first like few months of videos, I can tell I'm just blindly copying the questions and the format, and I'm not really understanding like why I'm doing this, or I'm just I'm just copying Anthony basically, or at least how I saw Anthony. But watching myself back, I can I can you, you just get patterns, you figure out the patterns, and then you can understand why these questions are working, and then you can get you can kind of extract the principles of the questions, and then that lets you have better questions and just explore better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you also yeah. feel like beyond just getting better at the SE component where you're asking the right questions at the right time and challenging at the appropriate, you know, moments, the component with, and re- probably Reed might be able to speak on this as well, but the aspect of actually recording simultaneously yourself and someone else in a good quality and making sure your audio is good and making sure like there's no distracting like backgrounds and you're framing the shots pretty well while you're still mm-hmm. trying to engage in this philosophical discussion it's like a juggling act it, it, it's it's a unique skill that you have to combine together with a bunch of others how do you get better at that balance over time as well and is that something that you've considered in terms of just the technical quality yeah yeah um, like when i first went out there i i brought this mic which is not a, the best mic for this. And I just stuck it in the <laughs> middle of the table with uh-huh. a little fuzzy thing on top. And I could hear everything, like birds, people walking. It was terrible audio. And I tried to fix it and post as best as I could. But uh, yeah, which which doesn't help with listening to the conversation when there's so much distraction. But it helps having uh, better microphones and all that. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah, there, yeah. there are little things that I've learned that you can do, like things that you wouldn't have thought of. Like, you know, you watch a video and when I raise the camera up, it makes this like horrible crunching, screeching noise. Like, <laughs> and uh, so now I like I loosen the little <laughs> screw. True. I, I try to, <laughs> and, so, and then I have to fix it in post-production. Like I mute it or something. Um, but lately, if you just, if you loosen the tension on it, it's like, or you could even use like some WD-40 and it makes a little bit of a smoother, less obtrusive noise. I mean, that's like one example of probably 30 that I could probably t- yeah. tell you about that. Just a little change like that can, can, I think it's those subtle differences. I think that kind of keeps upping your game. You, you know you what I like about seeing, I like about seeing video. Other people oh. coming up and doing this is that it's it's forcing me to take a look at the work that I'm putting out and get better at it. Mm. So I love this. Like I almost view it as sort of a, it's friendly competition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To produce a really good video quality example of what SE is. And so I I love the fact that more people are getting into this and doing it and because it's upping my game. I never used to film with two camera angles until Reed came along. <laughs> <laughs> But by that, by that same token, I just want to say to every, anybody who's considering going out, even if you just record it on your cell phone, uh, go for it. Don't yeah. let it stop you. It doesn't that have to all be fancy. Are... Exactly. exactly. Just do something. Put something out. You could be filming the ground the whole time and just people's shoes. <laughs> Give us something to observe and listen to and get that feedback and then just you know, take it from there. It's a good point. Yeah. The first videos I have posted on YouTube are just nothing but audio. 
that I recorded, like people knocking on my door. They yeah. like, can we talk to you about God? I'm like, would you mind if I recorded it? Can I can I record it? And I like turn on my microphone and we'd sit down. And <laughs> when I'm done, I'm like, I finally did my first one. I did my first talk. Yay. I think and you said audience, that to me too. I think I listened to it. <laughs> I, I got some I gave you some feedback, I think. And it was just garbled mishmash for like 46 minutes. But yeah, like even that could still be helpful to like learn and grow. And it's good to have a starting yeah. point. And that helps me too. Like I'll be in the backyard. I'm, I'm, I don't know, pulling weeds and I'm listening to Ty's first audio encounter and like, it helps me and I can teach him. And I think when you, when you start teaching people stuff, that's when you get really proficient at it. Yeah. Have you guys ever tried uh, online AC? Cause to me, that just sounds terrifying. I'm doing it right now over Facebook messenger. <laughs> mm, yeah. That's, yeah, that's I not easy. I would rather prefer to do it face to face or over video. That's for sure. I mean, too. I think my skill set's better for face to face. What's the benefits to texting it? I you think Linda can tell us a bit about that. You have a lot of time in between. You don't, mm. you don't necessarily mm. feel rushed. Yeah, I get to think out your responses. That might stuff. be one of the one of the few positives of it. Mm -hmm. I could probably list more negatives. I always feel weird when someone else is reading the words that I give them in their mind sound if that makes sense i feel like they just mm -hmm. they whenever i apply them back i'm like hey did you consider like you might be wrong they'll be like oh did you consider you might be wrong <laughs> like uh, that's not how i sound in your head like i wish i had a way to express that yeah <laughs> in a nicer way and emoticons don't and do put that. a smiley face in there oh he's laughing at me <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there's so much gets lost during the text during the text discussions and hopefully people that are watching this, listening to this, understand that you don't have to film, but we like to do that. We like to go out and have these talks and film them and, and show other people how to have these conversations. Yeah, but I've been doing quite a, uh, a lot of experimenting online with doing SE online, but not just in text format with um, like in a chat, but also using Periscope, uh, where what I've found to be most effective is when I go into somebody else's broadcast, and this is, of course, what makes it difficult because I can't, I don't have any, I don't own that content in any way and can't control it really, but I go into somebody else's broadcast and what I do is I'm asking the questions and they are free to then answer and and um, and usually they focus on me if I'm asking good, good and interesting questions and that will be or have been like really nice SE um, interviews where the other people in that broadcast that also get um, intrigued by the conversation and by the questioning and the answers that the broadcaster is giving, then that creates like a, a nice um, moment and, and other people get to see it like live. And just today I had like this weird, quite interesting SE um, experience on, on Periscope where I was broadcasting it and I had a big group of people in and we were talking kind of like together, kind of figuring out this thing <laughs> um, where it was like, how do we know if a God exists? And it was a group SE thing. I don't even know. I have to watch it again and analyze it, but it was mm. quite um, interesting. That went out on Twitter if you're interested. But it's really long, like, and it's hard on Periscope because it's not like it's going to be great from the beginning. We're not going to get into the meat in the beginning. It's somewhere within that two hour. <laughs> yeah. Long yeah, periscopes broadcast. are kind of a they're kind of a marathon. You know, if, yeah. you're on, if you're gonna go on a long drive, throw in a periscope of SE maybe and you'll catch a few. But yeah, you have to kind of be patient on those and mm. but I guess my point is also that I'm ex experimenting there and I'm I do have some ideas of how to make that into like shorter kind of shows where we're doing SE together. Group SE I call it mm. is the working title. I think there's a way to download the video, like from your Periscope, and then upload it to your YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I need to look kind into cut that. Cut out the relevant portion. Sure. Yeah. Then I then I've got like content for years. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of content, should we talk about what we our little playlist idea? Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Who wants to talk about Who, that, Ben? I don't know. Okay, ben. that'll do it. Cool. Um, so yes, for everybody watching is, is interested in AC, uh, we started a playlist where we're going to, going to post all of our talks, uh, all of the content creators we know about are going to be on this, this, this playlist and, uh, we're going to update it as frequently as we can. So it's going to be rolling for a 
be a rolling period of four weeks where we're going to show all the content that's been produced in those four weeks. So it's it's very cool if, if you want to try and dis discover more content creators, see different approaches. Uh, you've all got it on one place where you can go and check it out. So, yeah. Can we uh, maybe post a link? I just pasted the, yeah, I'll put the link in the video, but for people listening, it is tinyurl.com forward slash se dash pl for playlist dash latest releases. And you can book, I don't know if you could bookmark that. Yeah, you can probably bookmark that. This? Yeah, it's awesome. So for all the different content creators that are uploading videos, uh, Linda and Ben will primarily be the ones managing this list. So you can just go to this one playlist. If if you if you've it's been three months since you've watched an SE video, you can just go right to the playlist and see the latest releases. We were also talking about grouping them by month too. Mm. Mm. And this month's uh, playlist is actually really, really nice. I started watching it this morning, um, like from the beginning, I got to about the fifth, sixth video and it's a really nice mix because there's like us newbies who are, who are learning and, 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 um, and like really good instances. And then there are like uh, um, Reed and, and Anthony in between and like it's, it's really nice. It's kind of like new stuff on, on like really broad uh, spectrum of experimenting and doing SE. I thought it was really good. I'm sorry. And we were also talking about adding interviews. So like I know, Ty, I think you did an interview recently. I don't know if it was ever on YouTube, but um, if somebody does an interview of Reed or myself, we can also toss it in that playlist. So it, it would be a mix of conversations with people on the street as well as us discussing this method. Yeah, not necessarily interviews, just SE related. Yeah, videos. I guess we would probably toss this episode in there as well. So quick yeah. question, uh, if there are people that we don't know about, how can they get involved in this playlist and how can they let us know about the chat or the video YouTube, the YouTube video playlist? Other content creators? Yeah, if there's new content creators that pop up, how can they uh, inform us to be added to the playlist? Or do they have a way of doing that now? Um, you can um, tweet at someone who should be the person to... <laughs> <laughs> to get those messages. we usually spot um, we do usually spot the videos uh either they come up as unrelated i'm like well wait a second who's this guy i've never yeah. seen this guy before and then i usually reach out to them and say hey are you aware of the group or and then it turns out that they're in the group um another thing is i think there's a way to scan for specific keywords in titles and descriptions and meta tags and automatically add it to to uh, to a playlist or this playlist that we're talking about, um, that could be a little risky, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, that might not be the best. Yeah, idea. yeah. I, I guess usually with the <laughs> way it goes, goes I'm, I guess I'm just trying to think of well, how did we find Linda, Ben, and Ty? Usually, you guys. We found Hi! you. You guys yeah. 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 We, track you down. we add you. you appeared out of the ether. Um, yeah. As soon as, as as I opened my my Twitter account, I was I was always thinking about what the hell am I going to call my channel. And uh, I first I thought seeds of doubt, and I thought, oh no, that's that might be a bit negative. I don't want to go with that, so I went seeds of thought, and I checked YouTube. And I'm like, okay, nobody's using this, going to use that. And as soon as I created my Twitter account, I'm like, okay, I never actually checked Twitter, so I searched Twitter, and there I found seeds of doubt, <laughs> and it's another AC content created to out, and uh, was also busy setting up at exactly the same time. It's like, what? Hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody was saying too that it's it's so important, you know. Once once somebody crosses the threshold and goes out and records talks and then uploads them and goes through the effort of creating a channel, that we try to keep motivating those folks to not mm -hmm. give up, you know, because there have been several channels they start, they upload three or four videos, and then you never hear from them again. And I I I feel kind of bad about that. Like I'm I want to make sure that we. Um, you know, we support them. And I think this playlist will be great because it's like, like Linda was saying, it's going to be a mix of seasoned veterans of SE, people that are moderately new to it, and the person who's just uploaded their very first video all in one mix. And yeah. I think seeing subscribers when, you know, you, you see your subscriber list jump to 250 after a couple of weeks of doing it, that could probably be pretty motivating as well. So mm. uh, for the people that are out there, please try to support the new people that are uploading content and give them those, give them that feedback. We want them to keep going and getting better at this. I think mm. seeing other new people get involved in this is also a really inspiring thing. If you're already in it to keep doing it. And if you are on it already and you're like on that fence to jump over and join this side, 
Um, and I would also say anyone can free to contact any of us or anyone mm -hmm. that you know who does this regularly, like or uploads, if they ever want to get involved in that playlist as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want to mention your little side project, guys, the three of you, the thing that you're working on? Do you want to talk about that or you want to hold off on that? No, we can talk about it, right, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Let's Does do anybody it. Anybody have yeah. some dramatic music to cue before we do <laughs> oh. it? <laughs> <laughs> all right so linda right. Moko, ben diesel and i have started the league the league is basically a group of people who believe that we get better through critical feedback and constructive feedback um and what we try to do is give uh each other the opportunity to have an audience that listens to each other when we present our own videos or present any one else's media or have like a general question about SC that we think we would be good if we bounce it off some good friends who are interested in trying to provide some critical feedback. Um, I think we just released our first episode, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and who's doing the screen share right now? Oh, Cordial's got it. Sweet. Oh, there you go. Let me lock and, that in. Yeah, uh, I, nice. I know who did that font. Tyrone, that was you. <laughs> I love the logo there. Yeah, get so that cool. League of Legends in there. I see. I yeah, see it is. Yeah, it is. So we got a more uh, comic book oriented one, but I think we'll make a couple of them too, just for the fun of it. But uh, it's just a really cool way for people who are into making street epistemology media to have a set audience that's very, very interested and dedicated to giving critical feedback to one another. And we're a really happy group. We're a good bunch of friends. We're pretty chill. And we like to have a really fun time with our show. So we'll throw in games. There's bits. And if anyone likes Magmar as their favorite Pokemon, they're not invited. But other than that, everything else is fantastic. <laughs> and I recommend you check it out when you have a chance. What do you guys think? I shouldn't do the talking. Ben, <laughs> Linda, what do you want? Yeah, and we've also spoken about inviting um, new um, SE content creators uh, to get in, get get in on the fun and the fun of learning, and uh, to to have like guests like that. I think would be fabulous. So also, I'll be scouting for for new SE content creators because I'm really thankful that um, I I I could come into this um, community, and uh, so I'm going to go look for other people who just need a little bit of encouragement to to. Get, continue to be active. There you go. So if, you, if you're interested, you want to learn more about this, then reach out to Linda or Ty or yeah. Ben. We are fairly accessible. And I think hopefully our enthusiasm kind of shows through with this episode. I, I love it when somebody reaches out and says, I'm thinking about doing what you're doing. How do I get started? Yeah. I love those conversations. Yeah. Has I'll, there ever I'll, been I'll a... support you when you change your Magmar policies, but... No, uh, no. What? What's this magmar thing? I don't even know. Don't, don't worry about it. We got beef. Discuss. We got beef. We, don't wanna, we, we have really innocent wanna. ears, and we must protect them. So, <laughs> has anyone had any negative experiences from either doing SE, or has it changed you in a negative way? Mm. Well, it hasn't changed me in a negative way, but there have been like um, situations where when people are talking about um, uh, belief and things that are very intimate, then very um, like heartbreaking things come up. And, and dealing with that has been something that I wasn't prepared for, that I would get so much of it so quickly. Mm. Um, and I take it with great responsibility and like, um, I don't know, I, that people will trust me with their stories and, and that. I haven't really figured out what to do with all that. <laughs> that that's, that's really is one of the challenges. I, I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Like, I don't want people to just think, "Oh, I'm just they're just another check mark on my whiteboard." Mm. That these conversations really do mean a lot to me, uh, and their stories are important. However, I also have a lot of talks with people, and I can't just take it all home with me. I hear some pretty devastating things on the trail from people. So you, trying to find that balance, I think, is a little bit of a struggle where you, you're just not some, you know, unempathetic person who is just chugging through one person to the other, but also, you know, giving them as much as yourself as you can to a stranger, but then recognizing that, okay, that was a nice conversation. It was moving. However... I need to go. I have to take my kids to volleyball practice tonight mm. or something, you know, like trying to, trying to make that delineation is a little challenging. 
Something that, that um, I feel very strongly about is actually uh, being available to people I talk to. So uh, mm. I immediately had the card made, cards made and I always tell people, if you'd like to ch chat to me again, please, please, I'm open for it. Uh, whatever you want to discuss, it doesn't have to be on this conversation. I haven't had a lot of people take me up on it, but uh, yeah, anybody who might be watching who uh, might have spoken to one of us Please, um, if you feel like you, you want to discuss it more, we're always open for it. I think yeah. it goes for everybody. Mm. Yes, definitely. There's a time commitment there. Yeah, it is. I, if you want, you want to talk about negative aspects, have you found that SE has made you any weirder? As in, like, if I went outside and I had a conversation with a lady who thought the earth was flat, I wouldn't, like, tell my friends, oh, wow, I just had an immediate, a really engaging conversation with a flat earther. Can't believe it. Wonderful. She also believed in a God. Yeah. Can't believe I got that one. We got <laughs> yeah. that before. Well, oh, wow. I, see that. I talked to a lady who was caught under a bridge, but she used her God belief to hold the bricks up. Amazing. I can't believe I caught that one too. <laughs> Wonderful. My wife, if I, uh, if she tells me something, as soon as I get to the second question, she says, are you using SE on me? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I will say this. Um, I tried to, like we mentioned this earlier, but using SE on family members mm. is a lot different than using it with total strangers. Absolutely. And I remember when I first kind of came out to my parents, I thought I could do this SE thing. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, we're going to talk about your beliefs and why you believe that I'm going to go to hell or whatever. And, and we're going <laughs> to break this through. But like there was this kind of... Um, you know, they weren't as emotionally ready for that yet mm -hmm. because to them, their their son was having this change in identity and that was a, a bigger deal than I anticipated it would be because I was so used, I was so prepared to have this calm, rational discussion that I, I didn't realize there's a lot more emotions on it on their end than I was anticipating because I had already gone through the transition. They hadn't caught up yet. This is right. brand new for them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that can be really challenging and like SE is a great tool, but like all tools, there's a time and place for it and it's not going to fit, you know, for every job that you have. There's yeah, a power dynamic there else. too with parents, mm -hmm. especially if you're you know living at home still, um, mm -hmm. you know, you are, you are their responsibility and, and they have kind of have it all figured out. At least most parents tend to think that way. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that could be challenging, especially if you're if you're talking to them both at the same time. I don't know yeah. if that's the case. There's yeah. so much love at that table; it basically has its own seat, you know. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. Let's see. Talking with parents is difficult, had... but you could still have strangers talk to your parents, and it would still work on them. As he still works on people with who have families, it probably just mm. wouldn't be as good if it was your mm -hmm. family. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I'm not saying that it doesn't work on family. I'm just saying it can be much more complicated. Hey, Daniel, yeah. when am I coming over for dinner? <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. It's not, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I when I get my own place, Anthony, you're welcome, okay. more than welcome to come over anytime. Hey, mom and dad, here's my 40 year old friend. Uh, oh, that, that, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, this is the guy that may be an atheist. I'm sure you want to. <laughs> you know? your eye patch. Uh, <laughs> more mashed potatoes, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> I had a conversation with this dude three years ago and you know, we've been talking online ever since. Isn't that great? <laughs> I like mashed potatoes. That's very interesting. Can we yeah. explore? <laughs> yeah. It might be a little awkward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, where do we go from here? Ben, did you have something um, on your mind? I think I still. Oh yeah. Um, did, did, did you guys, have you guys ever had uh, interlocutors react negatively to your, to your talks? Times. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I've I've luckily only had it once, and uh, yeah, it's it always surprises me. Sometimes I even think, wow, Three you're times. you're kind of really pushing it, but um, most people really find the conversations to be very positive, even if it's if it goes to get to a point where it's a bit tense, where they're really thinking hard about something and it's really challenging them. Um, most people just say, I really liked it. Do you have some bad ones, Ty? I had three ones that I would say have bad moments in them, and they tend to be like some of the earlier ones or the ones where I'm deliberately not using SE because I'll tend to have the five-minute chat where I am using SE, and then 
fa- I'll fade into SE and then I'll fade out of SE and continue to have like a jovial conversation with the people I'm talking to. And when I'm in that jovial mode, sometimes we'll throw out something else after I explain what I was trying to do at the table with them. And I had a lady like, oh, who believed that, you know, education is important for kids. And we talked about that through SE. And then at the end, we're joking around and, and the talk's more or less done. I'm explaining to her the dynamics of what I'm doing. And she's like, oh, that's great. Then, hey, do this on me then. I believe 100% that Trump is the worst president ever, convincing me I'm wrong. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. But I'm still in that jokey mindset. So I start throwing up things like, well, you know, we didn't own slaves. We had presidents that owned slaves. And she's like, well, I don't know. Yeah, that was part of history. That's acceptable. I'm like, oh, no, I, that's the worst uh, uh, response to get because I'm obviously throwing facts at her and she's rebuffing them because I'm attacking her conclusion and not really addressing her methodology. So like once I realized that, I switched back into SE and then like about two minutes, we were able to establish that she had a criteria that would allow her to assess that Trump was not in fact the worst president, which no longer made her absolute. But I realized like as a direct contrast, when I wasn't using SE to compare it to when I was using SE, the, the tone and the, I would say the overall success of the conversation was night and day. So there is definitely something to uh, utilizing uh, epistemological approach. Um, but then I've had talks with street preachers who just didn't want to talk to me or like have a real conversation with me and were really more interested in just selling me their brand, if anything. And those are not very productive. Mm. There was one talk, I think I misgendered somebody and right in the middle of the conversation, they just decided, I, I think I'm done now. And they turned and walked away on the trail. And I was just standing there with a, Oh, wow. <laughs> my, my mouth was just open and I felt so terrible um, that I did that, but that's rare. I usually the conversations go really, really well. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say starting majority are really good. Did you ever notice that in your earlier conversations, you tend to be a bit more, your, your tolerance for people being not rational was not nearly as high as it was now. If, if that's too euphemistic, I would no. just say. No, I think what, the biggest thing that I've noticed between the old days and today is that I, I'm not rushed. And be, before mm-hmm. it was like, oh, I need to get these talks out there and they got to be five or seven minutes. Nobody's ever going to watch this. No, I'm not going to get good at this if I can't just get it really, really tight. And now I'm like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm out here. I'm having these talks. <laughs> Would you care for a water? Uh, where did you park? You know, the parking lot was full today, wasn't it? So I'm, I'm definitely spending more time on the rapport the the no i'm not it i'm not more like uh frustrated with bad arguments or anything like that it's it's yeah. it's more i've just become more comfortable doing it where i'm i'm relaxed i think if you were to like take my pulse it wouldn't be any different than it was now mm. than if i'm on the trail oh. than if i'm right. watching a show that i really enjoy or something right. like that that's where I want to get because I get like when I feel like I'm onto a, a really good question or something, I can just feel my pulse. It's, I get excited. And I'm like, oh, this, is, this is the really good part. And this is where I need to pause. And We've worked like, 20 minutes for this one question. Don't screw it up. Yeah, I, can, I can even feel myself starting to smile, but it's not a smiley moment. It's, it's going to go wrong if I do that. Oh, that would be so cool. What about you, Reed? Um, being in LA, and I used to have the sign that says, what do you believe and why? Um, people sometimes mistake me for Scientologists, mm. a Scientologist. <laughs> and uh, one time I was out on the trail and a hiker just sat in my chair, flipped me off, <laughs> and, then, and then got up and ran away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I suspect he thought I was just a Scientologist, or could I just be annoying in general? <laughs> Are you sure he was flipping you off and didn't uh, actually expect you to grab his middle fingers to like get a level check on yourself? Like see if you were clear pretty or not? Sure, pretty sure. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys have any interest in getting to the point where you can give talks on this, workshops or interviews? Ben's got something on that. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, like the main reason I got into this is I think in my country this can have a huge impact. Uh, we've there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of things that need to be talked out between people. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. We've currently got a political organization touring the U.S. trying to convince people that there's a white genocide coming in South Africa. It's been on Fox News. Oh, so, that's, that's legitimate. 
Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and it, it's, it's really getting to the point where we're also, it's, it's becoming very charged. And uh, I want to show people, <clears throat> not just about religious belief, about any belief, that we can have discussions about this in a, a very productive way. So, yeah, what I'm trying to do is not just to say, hey, atheists, come and watch my videos. I would really like to get everybody to look into street epistemology and to have more productive conversations. Mm. Me too. <laughs> Me too. And uh, But about doing talks, I feel like I'm just so crappy at it. I would need to practice that too. And first I need to learn street epistemology. But, yeah, I really feel like this is a... Uh, such a great thing that everybody can do and everybody can learn and I think it, it can have true great benefits to our like family lives our work lives our community lives and um, our global lives peace <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking really forward to the opportunity to be able to do talks and uh, in June I'll be going down to Pellissippi College in Knoxville Kentucky or Tennessee to give my first talk to rationalists of East Tennessee. There are a satellite group of the meetup group that I was with when I was down and working in Tennessee. And then there's a student, secular student uh, organization in Dalton, Georgia that I'll do a webcast interview with them for, or with them. And then there's a universalist church here in Lexington that's super, super cool. They let me go to their church with literally just a, uh, a microphone and start randomly asking people there, like, what do they believe and why do they believe it? And they were super open to the inquiry. And I think uh, uh, they they generally liked it. They invited me to give a talk over there as well. So like, I'm trying to like pace myself, but I also really uh, think that when you have the opportunity to like do these kinds of like public talks and show SE in a good light, it's really an advantage that we should take, especially when we're trying to get more people involved in this movement. Mm. Mm. But I think my strengths would be more in like doing workshops shops and stuff than having talks. Oh. I like spaz out when I have to like remember what to say. <laughs> I'm really good, really good when I'm in action and like doing stuff. Yeah. You can wear your mask maybe when you give a talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a mask. Yeah, she's got a mask. Daniel, oh, what cool. do you have coming awesome. up? What do you have coming up, Daniel? Me? Do yeah. Let me, let me talk about it. Sure. Uh, give my little few minutes on it. Uh, well, first, before I go into that, let me say, the first time we did this podcast, I made a joke saying that, oh, we're like the street epistemologist Avengers here. And like, compared to now, this is like Infinity Wars, right? I mean, like every single person <laughs> in this stream is like in a different time zone besides me and Anthony. And like, to me, that just shows the growth of the movement, even since I first started up in doing this. And so now... I have the opportunity to go to the Secular Student Alliance Conference in June up in Ohio um, to give my first street epistemology workshop. Oh, um, cool. And it's going to be awesome. And uh, I have a GoFundMe going on right now that you can help me out with. Um, we're asking for $1,500, and we're already past $1,000. Um, and so, like, the, the last $500, all this money is going to go towards um, buying our booth there and just getting product and T-shirts and stuff to give out for people. So um, it's, like, a pure investment for the SE movement. Um, what's great about this conference is that this is going to be the leadership of all the Secular Student Alliance groups in uh, America. So like all the people who are coming from Texas, and from Alabama and from Florida and like all these different states are coming up and are going to be hopefully bringing street epistemology back um, to their campuses if I do my job right. Um, and so this is just a really big deal for me. And I'm so, so thankful for the people who have donated to me already, including some of the people who are here in this stream. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, but a year ago, I was doing a video on Anthony's channel about me coming out as an atheist. And now I'm talking on street epistemology. And it is all because of the people in this community who have invested so much time into me. And I hope to represent this community really well. I think this conference is gonna be a big breakthrough um, for getting people closer to my age and, and college age interested in SE. And so I'm really, really looking forward to it. That's incredible. That is incredible. We're two thirds of the way there. The link is gofundme.com forward slash S-E-2-T-O S-S-A. So S-E-T-O-S-S-A. And you can help Daniel give a workshop on this method to college-age people 
who will be going back to their universities and presumably teaching the people in their group this method. Uh, I can't think of a better use of, of our time and resources in this community at this moment than this project. So hopefully people will go out and donate. And if you go to that fund and you see that we've hit our $1,500 goal, toss in some more. It, we're not going to turn away your donation. Um, mm -hmm. This will help us buy merchandise to give away to these folks. And the cool thing is when we place our order for this merchandise, a percentage of that will come back to us and help us fund an organization for SE. So it's going to be a really good use of your money. And I do hope you support it. Yeah, we're working on that organization. So these types of things can be, you know, written off for tax purposes. So that'll be good. That's right. Yeah. Dan, awesome. how much do I have to fund if to, to get you to fold up your ironing board that's in the background? It's really bothering me. Uh, <laughs> oh, how much do we have left? Give him a number, Jesus. Five hundred <laughs> for you, Ty. I'll do it for I, free. I give you twenty bucks if you fold it up right now. <laughs> right now? Yeah, clean up your room. Clean up Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. He's doing it. Get your credit card ready, Ty. I got it. I'm a, I'm down for it. <laughs> All right. Were there any other announcements here before we uh, before we wrap it up? And there he is. He's folding it up. Nice. Um, Look at that. I, th I think you had our announcement, right, uh, Anthony? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just laughing at him folding it up in the background here. Let's see him get clocked in the head with that thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, what's it? He's coming back. It's my mom's. I don't know how to fold it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll figure it out after the show. Um, yes, I have. Well, just just a couple brief announcements. Uh, I was on. I did an interview with. There's a new show. Okay, you've heard of the Atheist Experience. They're starting a new show, a new <gasps> spinoff show, and this. it's called the Atheist Interview Show. Oh. And the really? fellow there, Jimmy, inter uh, he interviewed me for their for their premiere episode, and I think it's coming out Friday. So you should start wow. to see yeah. a lot of interviews happening on that channel. Um, a week ago, I was on the Nonprofits, which is also an ACA production, and just yesterday, um, somebody from the Godless Bitches, which is also an ACA production, reached out to me for an interview. So I think I'll probably be driving up to Austin to do an interview with those folks. So I guess it's safe to say that we have a pretty good relationship with the ACA at this point. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Cool. I think there was one question from the audience. Uh, Adam does SE asked, what if I create audio and video but don't have a channel? Can I submit that somewhere? Oh, man. Okay, we've been toying with this idea of, of uh, creating an avenue for people to distribute their their conversations without having to go through the rigmarole of creating a a brand and a channel and uploading the stuff um we kind of put it on the wayside honestly because so many people are just doing it all right but w w we're open to it and there's there's a fellow that that is interested in in possibly giving folks an outlet for that but it's kind of been set on the back burner for now, to be quite honest. But if there's interest, if there's a lot of people there that are listening to this that would say, you know, I'd go out and have a conversation once a year and send, be willing to send you the audio or the video. If there's enough people that come forward to say that and, and they're interested in doing that, we might revamp the idea. Okay, but we just need to get some feedback and, and, and tell us that you're interested in doing that. But at the moment, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's requesting it other than Adam. Which, by the way, if you're not following Adam, Adam does SE on Twitter, please do. His tweets are very, very funny, very, very good, and very, very related to SE. Can't we, uh, isn't there already mm. a SoundCloud account that we can send audio to? Even yeah, if you don't that's have a true. Channel? That is true. Uh, we, we've done that before. We've, we've distributed audio on the SE podcast, and there's no corresponding video. So it's, it's conceivable. We can certainly do that. I would guess. I guess at this point, since we don't have a vehicle for it officially, if you if you have a good conversation, it's audio only, or it's a, it's a one off video on a cell phone. Message me on Twitter, and I'll listen to it, and we'll see if it's a good fit, and we'll we'll see if we can get it out there to people. We're not se snobs. Let's just put it that way. If you're covering the basics and you're and you're helping a person reflect on a belief, 
we want to see your content. Yes. All right. So I guess we can wrap it up. It was really awesome talking to you guys today. It's a great episode. Great show, guys. Seriously. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so much. Absolutely. Thank yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just give our, our channel information and contact info again. Where can people find you, uh, Ben? Uh, um, I'm Ben Diesel underscore SE on Twitter. Uh, I've got a Facebook page, but that's not the best place. Uh, my YouTube channel is Seeds of Thought SE. Uh, I've actually today hit 100 subscribers, so I've got my proper URL and everything. Oh, yeah. Hey. So yeah, All right. uh, get in contact. Cool. Tag. Uh, I would just recommend that you check out the SE League of Reviewers. Uh, we it's Ben, Linda, and myself. And it's all of us getting together. And if you like the vibe of this show, it's a really good place to just see more friends talk more about something that they love and that they're passionate about. And that's getting better at a really good hobby where we're trying to communicate with people. So SE League of Reviewers, uh, go ahead and put that on YouTube uh, and search for it and check it out. Nice. Is that on your channel? Uh, it's on Linda's channel, actually. Oh, it's on Linda's channel. And if you subscribe to that playlist, you should be able to follow their episodes, too. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Linda? Yeah, my channel is super curious, like the t-shirt says. Um, that's on YouTube. That's where you can find the SE uh, League of... What? What's we, what are we called? <laughs> the League of Reviewers? League of Reviewers. The League. It's, uh, the League is found yeah. on Super Curious. Um, and yeah, please subscribe. I, I haven't got my own URL yet, so <laughs> I'm grateful for every... <laughs> subscription if you want to direct message me do that on twitter it's at linda no it's not it's at love moco so it's l-o-v-e-m-o-k-k-o -K -K -O. nice uh dan yeah i am uh, objectively dan on twitter and i have a youtube channel now i'm trying to do some more stuff on there um and I'm also available on Facebook through the street epistemology study groups, stuff like that. You can find me on there as well. Cool. Anthony. You can find me on Twitter at Magna Bosco and uh, YouTube is Magna Bosco 210. I've been dabbling with Instagram a little bit, posting some pictures there. That's Magna Bosco 210. That's more of an afterthought than anything serious, but um uh, you know, you can find my content. It's going to be on that playlist. It's tinyurl.com forward slash se dash pl for playlist dash latest releases. Maybe we can shorten that. I don't know. But it's that that playlist is hosted on the se YouTube channel. So you might want to subscribe to that as well. So that would be a that's yeah, just a great place to go to for anything se related at this point. I'm sure there's a way to add a link to that in the description for everybody. Mm -hmm. We will. We'll add a link to everyone's content and channels and Twitters and everything that we've discussed in the show notes. Cool. And um, I think another announcement is Doug Pine Creek is going to be on Steve oh. McRae's show next week. I see Steve is in the chat uh, having a lively conversation with Doug. I like Doug. Doug D, not, not, mm -hmm. not Doug. Pine Creek. Oh no, him. I don't know that duck. <laughs> yeah, that's another duck. But uh, anyway, next, that's another announcement uh, slipped in there. But yeah, uh, I'm Reed Nice Wonder, Cordial Curiosity. Uh, find me on YouTube and Twitter, Cordial Curious, Instagram, Cordial Curiosity, Facebook, Cordial Curiosity. Sweet. Love it, guys. Thank you so much. It was really enjoyable. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Till next time.